So hi, I'm, I'm Kostas, and I'm a cloud solution architect working for Microsoft. And I'll uh, uh, use the 15 minutes I've got for sharing with you what we're, how we're seeing blockchain in Microsoft and what we are uh, working with uh, regarding blockchain. And I'm joined with my friend George uh, from KPMG, who's going to share with you how you can assess and realize the blockchain potential. So how we see first the uh, blockchain in Microsoft. So we see a lot of hype, as you might guess. So there are, there's a lot of noise, there's a lot of press out there about blockchain. Everyone wants to do a blockchain project nowadays. Um, the truth is though that it's pretty immature. The technology hasn't evolved that much. There are many offerings out there. Most of them are experimental. Uh, but they're targeting great things. So what we see with our customers, what we see in the market is that few actually make it to production. Few projects actually make it to production. So there is a diverse ecosystem out there. We see more than 70 protocols when it comes to ledgers. Some of them you might see in this slide. The brands are pretty well known. We see a vibrant open source community with projects, with startups coming up, and, and of course, more mature companies are also participating in that. So it's a fast moving market, and uh, there is a rapid pace of innovation. So there are the, the most important uh, um, thing when involved in a blockchain project is to recognize the scenario and actually identify if blockchain is the technology that can serve that scenario better. So there is a workflow that you can use in order to um, evaluate that, um, that scenario. And there are three um, uh, basic questions that you should ask, which is, are there third parties involved in that scenario? Is there trust between these parties? And do these parties need to update the data? If these uh, questions are true, then there is a possibility that a blockchain scenario could be helpful to you. So this is something that you should go through when you're developing a, a blockchain scenario. To be honest, blockchain shows trem tremendous potential across many industries, manufacturing, retail, insurance, banking, government, and health are some of the um, industries that we are working with uh, ourselves and developing um, uh, proof of concepts or projects in blockchain. And I've put a list of some of them here. Of course, you can uh, afterwards take the slide deck and use it for your own purposes. So uh, a bank um, industry, Bank Hapoalim is one that uses blockchain for um, guarantees. Bank of America is uh, simplifying the commercial trade finance with us, with blockchain. Moog is a company that uh, uses blockchain to improve performance tracking for critical items like components for fighter planes. Singapore Airlines, their loyalty system is built using blockchain. Maersk, they insure their containers using blockchains. Um, and Webjet is reducing booking errors um, using blockchain. Uh, technology. 3M, validating their products authenticity, and lastly Nestlé to optimize their supply chain with blockchain. So these are some of the scenarios that we're working with and we're working with blockchain. So the question is why isn't everyone using blockchain right now? Why we are not adopting blockchain for all the, all the industries, all the scenarios that we've seen before? And the truth is that Blockchain wasn't built for the enterprise. It was built for cryptocurrencies, for coins. It initially started with that. So there are, um, we're lacking in enterprise grade ledgers. They are not designed for public networks. Um, uh, ledgers actually are designed for public networks, not for permissive. Cryptocurrency lack the performance. We, we are lacking in um, throughput when it comes to ledgers. And confidentiality and governance are some of the characteristics that enterprises needs for, need for their solutions. Smart contracts were not built with the tools 
and languages that we know, we, they're not built using any of the tooling that we know and the skill sets that we have. And getting off the island, integrating a ledger with your already existing applications is pretty, pretty hard. So that's what this slide is trying to depict. It's hard to bridge the gap between deplo your deployed blockchain ledgers and the existing tooling that we already have as enterprises. So that bridge is really difficult in one enterprise. And if you're talking about blockchain, you're obviously multiplying that with all the participating members. So as many as the in, uh, members on the consortium, that, um, that multiplies the problem uh, in that factor. So it's really hard to bridge that gap. So except uh, um, of that, building an end-to-end -end blockchain solution is a huge undertaking. It requires a lot of components and a lot of building blocks like identities integrating with business applications, configuring the network, synchronizing off-chain data, manually deploying the ledgers, ingest messages and events, and all these take time and are pretty difficult to implement. So what we are doing in Microsoft, so we've seen our view, we've seen how the market evolves, we've seen um, what are the pains when it comes to blockchain projects, what we are doing as Microsoft. So we, ha we are working on three pillars. The first one is blockchain on your terms. So we are not focusing on a ledger. We are not discriminating. We are accepting any ledger out there, integrated with your business. We are providing the tooling to integrate with your applications and your solutions, the ledger with your solutions. And we are focusing on the enterprise. We are not focusing that much on the financial aspect of blockchain, but mostly of how we can leverage blockchain for enterprises to solve enterprise problems. So we've taken three steps to, uh, regarding that strategy. The first is uh, populate pre-configured networks integrate relevant cloud services so that we can use the application I've mentioned before, and the three build simple interfaces, one that we can use to leverage blockchain. So step one, um, populate pre-configured templates and infrastructure. So we will use wizards. We are using our cloud infrastructure and wizards to enable the provisioning of these ledgers easily by following a wizard. So pre-populating templates help you deploy these ledgers very quickly. Next, we pre-build connections in Azure with the tools that you're already familiar. So uh, we provide identity and key management, enterprise integration with platforms like SAP, Adobe, Salesforce, we provide the data platform for machine learning and BI in the data that are stored in the ledger or off-chain. We are providing monitoring and security and API management so that you can quickly integrate with your applications. And finally, we provide all this through an easy to use um, UI through the um, Azure portal. So this is our strategy. And on top of that, we have tools like um, 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 Workbench. Workbench is a solution that enables you to scaffold your contracts and provides UI and a workflow. These are some of the characteristics. It provides workflow execution, identity, ledger abstraction, auto-generate startups, and Azure data integration and workflow user administration. So by providing just your contract, it will scaffold it and create UI and workflows that you can start using from day one. So this is basically what all the components that will create for you. I won't stay that much in that slide because it's pretty technical. But basically what your benefits are from Workbench is that you simplify the development, you accelerate um, to the value, and you innovate with confidence. So we are taking all that out and we let you focus in writing your business logic, extend the capabilities of your solution, 
and customize your integrations because this is what you have to focus to, not the blockchain um, uh, all the other tasks. So these are some links that I've provided for you. In order to learn more, you can go to our Azure blockchain page or follow the blog uh, that we have, connect with our Microsoft tech communities, and there is an Azure Advisors program that you can join and get more information or get early access to these programs that we are working with and start using them. So I'm going to invite to the stage George to talk about how you can assess your uh, solutions. Thank you. So thank you from my side. Thank you, Costantinos. Um, I come from KPMG, and usually when I speak to uh, people that work uh, with blockchain, they look at me as this corporate monster that doesn't understand that blockchain is all about changing the status quo and disrupting. I actually love blockchain. I think it's brilliant. I think it solves a lot of the problems that we have seen all over the years. But at the same time, um, I have a friend in the UK that is in technology, but he's a very cynical person. He says that all these people working with blockchain are like headless chicken running around not knowing where they're going. I don't agree with that either. It's somewhere in between. So basically what I want to say is that blockchain is brilliant. Blockchain is here and it's going to stay. But there is a lot going on that will for sure not succeed. And we need to put some structure to this disruption, I think. And I know some people don't like the term structure because winter will come for some of the blockchain initiatives, not the technology itself, but about what's going on now in the market. Some people, um, actually the second bullet is from a Gardner presentation. I borrowed it and I have to state it. And it says that if you ask now what is the only, sorry, what is a successful implementation of blockchain, the only sure answer is Bitcoin and the successful also depends on, on, the, on the reader. But we see a lot of projects. People are trying to do on blockchain that don't need to be on blockchain. 90% of the enterprise blockchain projects are centralized designs. I was sitting yesterday uh, across from a regulator that was very excited to do a KYC blockchain project as long as the database remained in their premises, which doesn't make sense. So everybody's trying to do blockchain, but not everybody understands how it should be done. And not because they're not understanding, it's because everybody's on the hype trying to utilize this technology. So the real applicability needs to be assessed. So what we're doing basically, uh, we suggest organizations, because we're talking about enterprise level here, to have an approach for a practicality and maturity assessment. It's like any other capability model where you have some maturity levels, starting from an initial level, which is basically ad hoc, not planned, reactive approach, a managed level where you have a management process for projects, but still is reactive. Uh, to a defined level where you have an approach throughout the enterprise and it's mostly proactive so you know where you're going, what you're doing. And then the quantitatively managed where you're actually measuring the success and the output. And then of course optimizing. And to do this, you need to have some areas that you're assessing. You need to have a clear insight into the risks that you're taking. And that the risk can be anything. I'm not talking about compliance or regulatory. I'm talking about the risk of failure or success or the risk of spending too much for something that doesn't provide a return. You have to have a from proof of concept to production plan. Actually, the second and third item are, are combined. We see a lot of proof, uh, uh, proof of concepts. But when you ask what's the business model that you're going to bring this into production, the information is not there. And the last one is my favorite. You need a unique and validated model. You need to know why you're doing this based on some research and some information. And those areas break down into more areas, 10 areas. Consensus mechanism, chain permissions, data management. We have a collaboration with Microsoft so we can help both on the technology and on the planning and practicality assessment point of view. So thank you for that. I don't have another slide, so I'm done. <laughs>